It is a great honor and a true pleasure to introduce the Honorable Richard Bernstein, the Michigan State Supreme Court Justice-elect. To the friends, to the staff, to the supporters of OHAL, thank you for the work that you do. Thank you for the difference that you make. Thank you for the impact that you have. To the consumers that are here tonight, you should always know that your strength, your resilience, your incredible approach to life, no matter the challenge, no matter the hardship, no matter the difficulty, is an inspiration to us all. We gather here because we as a people simply need to believe that extraordinary things can happen. We simply need to believe that extraordinary things are possible. And as we hear the speeches and see the films, we can't help but ask the question, the question that takes us back to the book of Job, the question, why is it that I can do everything right? I can be humble, I can be pious, I can be good. Why is it that our God, a merciful God, allows for bad things to happen to otherwise such good people? Why is it that there are some who walk among us that have to know a greater struggle, that have to know a greater challenge, that have to know a greater hardship than others can possibly begin to imagine? I remember awakening in the trauma unit at Mount Sinai Hospital. I remember awakening with a sense of pain that was indescribable and a future that was uncertain. But I remember a rabbi coming to my bedside and I came to realize that God always sends us the people we need when we need them. For he helped me to understand that other than the choice that we as individuals make as it pertains to the power that exists between forces of good versus evil, that everything else that happens in our life that everything else that happens to us has been inscribed, has been set forth, has been etched in the book of life. But the one great choice that we as humans get to make is how do we react to the lives that God has chosen for us? How do we choose to react to the lives that are ultimately our destiny? You come to realize, as Ochal realizes, that an easy life does not always correspond to a good one. Often is the case that those who know hardship, those who know challenge, those who know difficulty, and those who know pain come to understand purpose. They come to understand reason. They come to understand mission. Those who are able to live their life with a true sense of passion, with a true sense of understanding why they were created, what they were sent here to do, and what their ultimate mission is, are people who come to have a tremendous connection with life, a tremendous connection with people, and a tremendous connection with that of our Creator. We ask ourselves, We ask ourselves, why do bad things happen to good people? And why do some come to know a greater challenge and a greater struggle? It's interesting. We look for that sense of connection. We look for that sense of guidance. I remember getting a call one morning from a wonderful young Orthodox mother. She asked me on the phone, she wanted to know why it was that she had done 
what she should do. She told me that she would pray every day that God would bless her with a child. And she wanted to know what kind of a God would do what God did to her. For God answered the prayer and gave her a child, but the child that she gave birth to was born with a severe disability. She asked the question that we all ask, what kind of a life is my child going to come to know? Is my child going to have the chance to make friends? Is my child going to have the chance to live on his own? Is my child going to have the chance to have a job? Will he ever take a wife? Will he have a family? What will happen to my baby when I am no longer here? She wanted to know would there be anything about her child that would be remotely ordinary to that of other children? I remember answering her by saying, the answer is no. For you and your child were not created by God to simply be ordinary. You were sent here to be nothing short of extraordinary. For your mission would take on a greater purpose. It would take on a greater role. It would take on a greater mission. And by ultimately setting course on this mission, we'll give you a full life. We'll give you an exciting life. We'll give you a dramatic life. But it will give you a life that is blessed with fulfillment that is blessed with connection. You come to look around the room and as you come to see the consumers of Ohel, you come to realize that they have been given God's greatest blessing. The blessing of perspective. The blessing of connection. The blessing of strength. The blessing of an incredible resilience and optimism that seems to know no bounds that seems to be limited by nothing. Now, as you heard in the introduction, I have been blessed to have the opportunity to have completed 18 marathons and a full Ironman competition. I believe that athletics represents the story of Ohel and it represents the story of life at its core and life at its essence. I remember Lake Coeur d'Alene and diving into it. I want you to imagine the feeling you would have as you dive into a body of water that was 55 degrees. I want you to imagine the feeling you would have to be swimming in darkness, not knowing where you're starting, not knowing where you're going, and most terrifyingly, not knowing where you are. As you attempt to swim through the frigid water, you're unable to communicate with your guide. The only connection you have is a rope around your waist and around his. You get kicked in the face by all the other swimmers and being blind, you're unable to brace for the ensuing impact. You try to surface and get oxygen, but you can't because there's other swimmers immediately above you. And most difficulty, other swimmers become entangled in the rope that connects you to your guide. So as you attempt to swim and as you attempt to struggle, the rope becomes more constrictive and as it becomes more constrictive, it starts to take you below the surface. You try to keep your head above water, but the waves continually come rushing down. You come to realize something. You come to know what our consumers know. You come to know what Ohal knows. You come to realize that no matter how painful, that no matter how challenging, that no matter how difficult or unknown life becomes, you come to realize that Hashem will always give you what you need when you need it. He won't give you anything more, but I can testify to the fact that He will never give you anything less. You come to learn the way our consumers have learned that ultimately it is the case that through challenge, pain, difficulty, and hardship, 
It is easy to have a relationship with our Creator when your life is going well, when your business is going well, when your health is what you hope for. But those who come to have a real connection, those who come to have a real understanding, those who come to have a true relationship with Hashem are those whose relationships are strengthened by that challenge, by that hardship, by that frustration, and by that pain. We ask ourselves the question, why do bad things happen to good people? We ask ourselves the question, why is it that there are some who walk among us that have to know a greater burden and a greater struggle than others? I remember just a short time ago, about two years ago in fact, walking in Central Park in the pedestrian lane, I was getting ready for my 18th marathon. As I was walking in the pedestrian lane in the park that I have memorized and the loop that I know all too well, a cyclist was traveling at a speed of in excess of 35 miles per hour. And as the cyclist was going at such a high rate of speed, he ultimately lost control of his bicycle and in doing so, veered into the pedestrian lane where he struck me directly in the back. Why do bad things happen to good people? Why would Hashem allow for such a thing to take place? For a person who struggled with his blindness by participating in athletics, by finding strength through athletics, by finding identity through athletics, by having a voice through athletics, why would you strike them down? Why would you make them have to live at Mount Sinai Hospital for over 10 weeks? Why would you strip them of their independence? Why would you make it impossible for them to do basic things like use the bathroom or take a shower? Why would you require nurses to have to reposition him every 10 to 15 minutes? Why would you make him have to live with a pain that's difficult to understand or even begin to appreciate? Why, Hashem, if you're so merciful and kind and understanding, would you make life so hard and so challenging and so difficult? But our consumers here at Ohel know the answer to that question. Because they know at certain times in life, there are moments that define who you are, where you've been, but most importantly, where you're going. A year ago, November, it was time for the New York City Marathon. It would be Marathon 18. But it would be the first marathon after a catastrophic injury. Attempting to run to the streets of New York with a shattered hip and a crushed pelvis would be difficult to say the least. But it was something that simply had to be done. Something that might not have been advisable, but something that had to simply be done. You come to realize as you run through the streets and as you find your way to mile 18, the pain becomes so severe that you are struggling just to stay conscious. The pain becomes so severe that you are fighting the urge to pass out. But like our consumers know, it is at those moments, it's at those times, we all have a spiritual war that exists within us. And you come to realize at the darkest moment, at the most difficult time, you come to realize a fire that exists within you. You come to realize a strength that you never thought you had. You come to realize that yes, the body is mortal, but the spirit and the soul know no bounds. It is at that time, it's at that moment, it's at that place that you come to find a sense of peace, a peace with your new life, a peace with your new circumstance, a peace with your new situation, a peace with your new body, and ultimately, a peace with Hashem. Why do bad things happen 
to otherwise good people? And why do some know a pain and a struggle that others cannot possibly begin to understand? I believe the answer goes something like this. And I believe that our Ohau consumers teach it to us each and every day. You reach a certain point in life where you can't focus your attention on simply trying to get over it because you realize it's time to just get on with it. Ohau teaches us that we will do what is hard to achieve what is great. For as we conclude, we must look at our life the way Ohal sees it. We must look at life as a great novel, as a great artistic composition. And within any novel exists a tremendous story. And within any story, there must be chapters of pain. There must be chapters of heartache. There must be chapters of disappointment. There must be chapters of setback. For it is only through these chapters that you can come to find joy, strength, hope, opportunity, resilience, and ultimately triumph. Ochal teaches us that this is nothing less than our finest hour. For Ochal teaches us the lesson that extraordinary things can, will, and must happen for us all. And with that, on this glorious night, let us celebrate life through all its struggles and difficulties and hardships, but yet for all its mission, fulfillment, joy, and euphoria. And with that, let us say, Amen.